So, you know, what's kind of interesting. I have this tax channel, but I've lost 87 pounds and I've got a practice that's kind of a unicorn practice, unicorn business, not in the business of unicorns, but as in, wow, I didn't know one of those existed. And um, so I'm kind of finding some common ground between losing weight, 87 pounds in the last 13 months, and uh, also shedding clients and getting my practice, my business where it is, where I'm more profitable than I've ever been with the least amount of work, the least amount of tax returns that I've ever had. Now, unfortunately, it uh, all started October 13th of 2021 when I had a stroke. So for the first year of recovery, it was recovering and just getting my energy back. And um, by the way, I'm uh, going to show you what I normally eat, uh, at least when I'm not at home. Uh, but anyways, I got this nifty little thing. I'm 51. Nifty and cool. Um, but anyways... The first year of recovery was actually getting my practice to not be a big fat slob. Okay. And then the next year was then losing weight. And then in none of that two years have I done any working out. What I've done is I've eaten right. And, uh, Single ingredient foods. What does that mean? Right here. Fresh stuff. Right? Well, I, I don't know. I guess that's not fresh. But meat, veggies, um, veggies, and fruit. I always got oranges. But, uh, you know, I started thinking after now the two years reflecting on this. Getting your business where it needs to be is similar to where you need to get your body. And when we correlate that, it might be easier to think about getting your business to be more fit. See, many, including me, so I've been in practice for 26 years, been doing this 31 years. Um, we think, oh, the more clients we take on, the more employees we have, the more locations we have. Whoa, we're like a buff business. Like, wow, look at us. Okay. I had five locations, 13 people working for me, you know, several thousand tax returns and doing several million dollars of gross a year. Here's where I'm at now. I do 500 tax returns, but I'm done by tax season. Even if you don't know taxes, like you probably would go, wow, uh, a CPA, an EA, a tax pro, like has all their tax returns done, 500 of them by April 15th. What? Yeah, that's really what I worked on the first year was getting my business fit. I thought when I was five locations and you know lots of great employees and thousands of uh, tax returns and clients and bringing in money, 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 like, oh, well, that I would have thought, well, that's the buff, like, whoa, the Arnold Schwarzenegger of businesses, right? No, it was a big, fat, slob firm. Now, don't at all think for one second we put out sloppy work. I had four CPAs working. We had procedures. We had checklist upon checklist. We made sure that everything that went out the door had been uh, reviewed, re-reviewed. We had quality control, pristine work going out the door, okay? The product, but I'm talking about me as an owner. Okay. Now I had two basic managers that oversaw people, everybody got their continuing ed. So you're like, well, what are you really talking about though? I'm talking about the toll that that big business had on me. Does it mean you can't have a big business? No, that's not what I'm saying, but you sure can have a little business and I'm making more money. I got less payroll, less overhead, right? Don't have to start doing a lot of math to go, well, Okay, maybe your gross went down, but if my expenses went way down more, it's all about the net, right? It's all about take home. So it's the same thing with dieting, right? 
Because in our head, uh, we think, um, Amanda said I should eat while I'm talking to you. I just don't, I just don't think I can do it because my mouth would be full. You look at somebody and you're like, yeah, that's a fat slob. So I'm not going to bring a picture up, but if you go back to May of 21, I've lost 110 pounds. 110 pounds. That's like a whole person. That's like two small children, right? That's like uh, uh, being pregnant three times over, okay? Neck 18, now I wear 15. My head, half, seven and a half, seven and a half, anyway, seven inch now. Okay, 42 waist, now I'm a 30 waist. With that being said, you could look at me. Of course, no one ever said anything when I was fat. People do like to can, you can say, oh, you didn't see me, you see me. But you can look at a person and go, that's a fat slob. Now, we never say that. Well, well that's just hurting somebody's feelings. I, of course it is, right? Doesn't feel any better when someone's like, you know, uh, you're kind of skinny. I mean, like, you know, maybe you need to stop. Who goes up like, you know, you're kind of fat. Like, you're a fat slob. Like, I see the fat hanging over your pants. We don't ever say that. Why? So we can pick out an unhealthy person. <laughs> Many of us, I mean, I was unhealthy forever. Didn't want to be. But see, you know what? These are not two things that were mutually exclusive of each other. The way that my business was, okay, I told you all the great things about it. But I was working all the time. All the time. Seven days a week. Loving it. Right? Phones off the hook. Putting out fires. Going to see this client. See that client. And this was, I had nothing to do with social media. All I did was taxes at the one firm. I didn't have other activities going on. The firm, my CPA firm. So when I had a stroke, my blood pressure was like, you know, pretty consistently 180 over 120. Now it's, you know, 124 over 70. And uh, cholesterol is through the roof. Well, I'm in much better health now. I'm even doing some extra stuff that I, I just started doing a couple of months ago with some just making sure I've got the right vitamins and getting blood work done. Of course, ever since the stroke, I go to the doctor every 30 days. Um, I always carry an aspirin in my pocket every single day since the stroke. And uh, they're not mutually, as mutually exclusive of each other because what I found is the way that I was working was having a direct effect on my health and be like, well, that's kind of an obvious jai jai. Okay, but it might be an obvious, but it's every one of us most of the time, right? So the way that I was working led to not enough sleep, led to eating late, eating to reward myself, not having time to even eat. Oh, I gotta have caffeine, I gotta have this drink or that Coke or whatever. Right? Forgetting to drink water. I'm so busy. Right? Doing what? Making money. Right? Boom, boom, boom. It's really easy to sit there and lay there and be like, yeah, I never do that stuff. What I'm being is real for you. But the correlation is, is that when I had stroke, the first thing I had to do was obviously just get my energy back. But I had to immediately make changes to my practice. Do, did, did I tell you the date that I had a stroke? It was October 13th. Now, if you're not in the tax world, you don't know, but that's two days before probably the second uh, uh, biggest tax deadline that a tax practitioner has, uh, April 15th and October 15th, okay? Now, uh, just FYI, I had that stroke on October 13th. Luckily, I had everybody done. Now, the stuff that I did leading up to that, I have no memory. A lot of memory loss going back like almost three months before the stroke, you know, it's just fries, um, you know, memory, brain, you know, electrodes in your brain and it has to regroup. And the, the energy loss is from mostly your brain reworking itself. Um, but I had to immediately get after it because when I was in the stroke unit, they said, listen, you work overtime, you're dead by April 15th. There's just no two ways about it. 
all these tests that we've done, you don't have anything physically other than you've got a lot of weight, you've got high blood pressure, you got high cholesterol, but we don't see a clogging of this. We don't need to do um, a uh, uh, any kind of surgery and you don't have any brain damage, you know, got checked several times, cleared by the neurologist, two different ones to be able to do taxes. But I knew going into that tax season that that's my bread and butter, yo. Like even then I would did social media, but I, I had to just put social media completely on the back burner. Uh, I had seminars. I travel around doing seminars around the country, had to cancel them all. Um, I, I, I just wasn't able to do anything but get better and then get ready for tax season. And what else did I have to do? The hard decisions. And what I had to realize was my practice, at least the way that I was interacting with it, was a big fat slob the way that I actually was a big fat slob. I dressed well and shaved, right? So I'm kind of just having fun. And by getting my practice right, so where am I at now? I think I told you. That then allowed me to sleep, to eat properly, have time to eat, pay attention to when I eat. See, I think the biggest culprit for me was uh, being so tired and working late was eating late and then eating for energy, eating carbs because I needed the energy, you know, not drinking enough water because I was drinking other things, you know, like things that had caffeine in it or whatever. And and what do we do, especially fellow tax pros, right? Well, client comes first. You know, we got we got deadlines to make. So that's how they talk around here. Um, and that's all true. Until you realize that like that, it can just all be taken away. So the practice, our business, we've got to get that under control. See, when you talk about practice management, so I do seminars on this. I'm pretty excited. I'm going to be doing a pretty big seminar up in Indiana in December um, with CPAs directly talking about practice management. And, and part of that, a sliver of it, is talking about like your diet and your health. But when we talk about practice management, this is what I would think most business owners would think, because this is how I thought. Look at over there. I got me uh, three lions in there, some gorillas. Uh, I got me an elephant and zebra. Look at all that I got over there and all kinds of things running around, small things flying around. Look at all that. And we go, well, you need to do some practice management. And so we look at the cage that has all the animals or the field we go, look at all those. And we go, all right, so how do I manage the lions and the panther and the zebra and the gorillas and the, and the elephant? You don't. Practice management is going, well, are we going to serve lions? Are we going to serve elephants? Are we going to serve gorillas? And like, whoa, 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 whoa. I want to serve all that. Great. Maybe you figured out a way. But what I'm telling you is, if you're doing practice management, it's not just the hairy mess that you got and you figure out how to just untangle but keep the mess. You still have a mess. If you're like, well, we're going to divide the half and then you take care of that mess and then this manager takes care of that mess. You didn't really solve anything, especially as an owner. Well, we'll just hire more people. What'd that do, especially as a business owner? So practice management is you've got to make changes the same as I had to make changes to what I'm eating. So we all know, hey, if we want to lose weight, what do we got to do, right? Do we just go, well, we still eat a bowl of ice cream every night and have those three biscuits on Sunday morning, right? And big old thing of pancakes. And then we'll try and be good on Monday and Wednesday and Friday. But, you know, on Thursdays, no, when most likely, you know, well, hey, I got to make a change. We go on the diet, then what happens? Oh, God, man, I did the diet. And then what happens? We just gain it all back, which is the same as with your business, just thinking I can still handle all the lions and tigers and bears. I'll just figure out how to better, you know, take care of them. So I had to make life changes. So I had to give up big clients, clients that I'd had a long time. I was like, you know what? What works for me? What am I good at? 
and what works for me. What a concept. What? How selfish of you as a business owner saying that that business it should be working for you. Customer's always right. Well, if I'm dead, I'm not helping one customer. Okay? So I had to get my practice right. I had to make hard decisions, and I did it. Why? I didn't want to die. Duh. So it's kind of easy to go, I'm sorry, Tim. I love you. You've been a, a, a client since the summer of 1997, 60 days after I opened my practice. But I let you bring me a, a pile of crap since the get-go. And there's no way to train you to do it differently after now. And I don't have time or the energy to retrain you. And I can't wait for your promises that you're going to do it differently. It's just that right now, you don't do what I need. I need clients that just hand it in and it's clean. We plan with, we're working with all year. See, it's the same as going, well, I'm going to go on a diet, but I'm just going to have a, a half a Twinkie instead of the full Twinkie. Like you, you got to actually cut some things out and maybe you have a big business. And so you can still have a big business and all the things that go along with a big business, but specializing and think of it this way. You can't just practice management by going, there's a big old pile of horse manure over there because any way you slice it, it still stinks. Anywhere you put it, it still stinks. You might find people to handle it. It still stinks. It's still a pile of manure. The same as if we were looking at somebody and you're like, okay, uh, I see that you're on a diet. I see that you're exercising. Awesome. But I, you don't look any different. Okay. So when we're talking about dieting, we know. So I'm trying to relate here, practice management and dieting. We know we have to make changes. And when we make changes, then we start seeing results. So I've got other videos on what I did, but just in case you haven't seen them, because I only got a few because I'm a tax channel. Um, but I made sure I got sleep. Number one, boom. Now, when I had the stroke, I was sleeping 12, 13 hours a day. So I had a head start on that. But I'm in bed at 9.30, sleep by 10. I don't set an alarm. Let my body wake up. Number two, wake up when it's had enough. See, my brain knows when I've had enough sleep. I don't even, I don't dream. I'm not distracted. I usually get my good eight hours, right? Maybe nine, maybe seven. My body just wakes up. I don't start anything until 10 on practice management. I don't take one appointment, one phone call, period, the end until 10 a.m. Unless it's some major exception. I don't do it after four. So I've got practice management and, and boundaries that I've had even when I had all of those uh, uh, employees and all those clients and had the processes in place. But what I found is the way that I was doing practice management for me, okay, was affecting my health. So sleep and then sleeping until my body wakes up on its own. The third thing is not eating after eight. See, for me, I found when I was tired, I ate. Well, I was tired all the time, so I ate. And when we're tired, what do we do? We eat more and we got to reward ourselves. The other thing is I didn't eat after 8 p.m. So many times working late, what am I doing? I'm I'm eating dinner or a second meal or a fourth meal close to bedtime. Our body at night should be rejuvenating, not digesting food is what I came to conclude. So by not eating after eight, and then I don't eat before 8 a.m., it's just not a problem for me. When it was a little bit of a, a, of a change, I drink water. So that's the next thing is I said, I'm taking all choices out of this. I will only drink water. Then it's not like, well, it might have me a Coke, you know, have me a little caffeine. You're getting enough sleep. You don't need caffeine. No, I'm going to need some caffeine. You're not getting enough sleep. Our bodies create enough of a battery for us. And I'm just saying, because I live it to go throughout the day. Now nah, I got to have me some caffeine. Well, then figure out how to have caffeine in your water. My wife does a little packet whatever it is, and gives her some caffeine. She needs a little boost in the afternoon. Okay, I'm not criticizing. 
but I didn't give myself a choice. It's water, it's water, it's water. Do you want water or do you want water? I want water. Are you sure you want water? Because you could have water instead. Yeah, I'm going to have water. The next thing was when I was hungry, the first thing I did was drink water. Now, I don't uh, carry around big mugs uh, and I think it's great. You know, my daughter does, you know, you can count it. You know, my wife had one and it was like, you know, you drink, you, you know how much you were drinking. Cause like, well, you should be here by 10 AM and here by noon and that by two. I did it for about a half a day because it then felt like, it's like, gosh, all I'm doing today is just trying to worry about drinking enough water. Here's the deal. My body knows that I need water and it will say a uh, message you need to drink something. So when you're drinking water, right, it's the best thing we need for our body. And if that's the only thing, you can remove the choice. But here's the key is when I was hungry, I drank water first. Why? Well, it's because you wanted you to trick your mind that uh, that your stomach was full. I don't know, maybe. But what I had heard is many times when we think we're hungry, we're actually thirsty. So by drinking water, I could better decide, okay, am I actually hungry or was I just thirsty? And see, so by better having better uh, practice management, which was cutting clients out, wonderful people, cutting them out, you're fired. Why? Because I'm going to die and your tax return is not worth that. And by the way, little news for you, it's a news flash. We're all dying. It's just when. Oh, it's going to be a long time from here. You know, my parents live forever. My grandparents. Yeah, you know why they probably live longer? Because into the next thing that I'm going to talk about. I said, you know what? Here's what I'm going to eat. Meat, vegetables, and fruit. Was that organic fruit? Uh, you know, I didn't worry about that to start with. What I was going to eat is meat, right? A little bit of red meat. Oh, my gosh. A little chicken, some fish, right? All moderation. Veggies, what kind? Every kind. What kind of fruit? Every kind. Well, you know, you shouldn't have a lot of oranges, right? What I did was, what's going to work for me? Because if I'm eating meat and I'm eating veggies and I'm eating fruit and I'm drinking water, that's way better than, well, I'm looking at this candy bar and it, it shows it's got more uh, protein than it does carbs and fiber is built into that. And so that looks pretty darn healthy. So I don't eat anything that you unwrap, right? Well, I mean, maybe meat that's like this, but I can't think of anything. I got a video where I show you around my kitchen. This I'm not unwrapping it. Well, I lied. There's, there's something like this, right? This is kind of in a pinch. It's cheese and I, I, I barely eat cheese, but you know, a little pinch there and some cranberries and some nuts. <clears throat> but I was able to do all those things because I got my practice under control. Now, maybe you got it all figured out. Awesome. Perfect. I thought I had it all figured out. So until I realized I was a big fat slob in my practice management and just big fat slob, big old freaking belly. Like I saw a picture of myself in May of 21 that a buddy showed me here a couple of weeks ago. And I mean, I look pregnant. Like what? At the time, I wouldn't have thought. I mean, I look and I'm like, I don't even recognize this dude. Okay. So how do we better practice uh, in our business? What's the healthiest way to be? Is it as big as you can be with as many clients as it could be doing as many services? Is that really the definition? Because that's probably not the lean, mean whoop, person that we would think, right? Because when you see that, you're like, well, you're probably not eating Twinkies. You're probably pretty disciplined. So we need to be disciplined in our business. What kind of client do I work with? Well, you know, see, we cut hair here. And somebody came in and they're like, do you guys have any candles? And we're like, well, we got space here. We should might as well start selling some candles. Why not some bird houses? You know, everybody likes birds. And an entrepreneur goes, there's a way to make money. There's a way to make money. There's a way to make money. Tax professionals. Well, if I bring that person in, I can make, well, and if I bring that person, well, and if I bring that, oh, and then, well, yeah, I can do payroll. I can do sales tax. 
Well, oh, yeah, I could do a, a, that kind of return. You're a farmer. I've never done it before, but I'll figure it out. That sounds like madness. The same as if we were like, just give me some of that. I got some pizza and I got me some Twinkies and give me another burger. Yeah, throw on some more syrup on my pancakes. It's easy to see it with the diet. We don't see it with the business. We don't see the gluttony in business. Why? Because in America, it's like, well, that's just the way we do it here in America. You know, I, I when I was downsizing and I had to do it several times, I stopped telling people. Or I haven't taken on a new client since 2018. Had nothing to do with stroke. I haven't taken on a new client since 2018. Well, that don't sound like a good business, Maya. So I had a, an employee and uh, their father was like, I don't, the father told my employee, I don't think you should continue working for him because if he stops taking on new clients, then um, he's going out of business. So here's what's lucky in the tax business, right? There's a deadline every year that people are going to have to meet. And it's uh, basically overseen by an agency that uh, people are afraid of. So we're here to help, make them feel better about it, help them and make sure they're just paying the right amount of tax, okay? So for me, this is, this is I, I, I couldn't explain it anymore, but I found an opportunity two weeks later because this is an opportunity for me to show them in real life what gluttony looks like when we're talking about making money. So I wasn't sure how I was gonna kind of talk to this person, but anyways, I said, and this this employee was, you know, not in their 20s or 30s or 40s. OK, so older generation, her father saying that. So anyways, I had a I had a client and they were looking for somebody that could work part time. And it was OK if they worked from home and uh, really flexible on the hours. So I went to the employee and I said, hey, uh, I got an opportunity here for you. Um, I've got an, uh, uh, this client over here. He's he got a part time job. And it's flexible. You can work from home. It's pretty good pay, too. Okay, It's not as good as I'm paying you, but it's pretty good pay. So I know you're working full time, but what do you, you got time in the evening and on the weekends, right? Your kids are grown. Why don't you take that job? And she looked at me and she like was like, like I just landed uh, on Earth from Mars and had two heads coming out of my neck. It's like... She's like, why would I do that? I mean, like, do I not have a job here? I'm like, no, you got a job here. Why would I do that? And I said, your mind was blown. And I said, exactly. We can only do so much in our business. All we can handle is what can we work in a 24-hour period? Now, if I just don't say it that way. Say, we can always work more, and I just hire more people. That's all I do. Yeah, your work price sucks too then, especially for somebody who's just like, bring it on. Use a farmer, get in here. Oh, you've got a motorcycle shop? Heck, we'll figure that one out. Oh, you're in the oil and gas business? Well, that's a lot of work, but I'll figure it out. All right? That's the same as like, no, just bring, ma'am, bring me just the whole kitchen worth of food in here and uh, go next store and see if that other restaurant's got anything I can order. Because the more food I can have on my table, then, boy, I'm successful. So maybe when we look at practice management, the way that we look at, we know we need to diet. Maybe we're not dieting. We're not doing right. By the way, I, I hate the word dieting because this is not a diet. This, was, this is life change. I need to finish so I can eat. We see somebody, here it is. We see somebody. They're not in shape. How do we know? Right? How shallow of us? What do you mean you don't? What do you mean they're out of shape? Um, they got fat hanging over their belt. And they're walking around and they're breathing heavy. And they got a sandwich in one hand and a burger in another. Yeah, it's kind of easy to spot when somebody's unhealthy. Well, that's just hurting somebody's feelings. 
Uh, isn't it just a fact? Like that's not healthy. Do we go, hey kids, uh, when you get older, that's exactly what you want to look like. Now, does that mean, because I was there, fat hanging over. Okay, does that mean that's not a great, wonderful human being that's probably saving lives and is a saint? That's not at all what I'm saying. But what I'm saying is you look at that person like, that's not a healthy person. But we look at a practice and we go, boy, that's pretty healthy. They just bring on clients all the time. They're just getting bigger. But they're just working all the time. Boy, I'll tell you that, that that business owner, he's just working all the time. He's up there. That was me. That was me. So, um, you know, I, when I would tell people we were downsizing, I mean, like, mind's blown. Like, what? It's like, look, can we do some math here? Most people were like, I don't know how to do math. Look, can we do some math here? So let's say I'm bringing in $3 million, but I'm spending $2.7 million, okay? What's the net on that? Huh? 300000 okay? Now you go, well, what, what are you doing now? About 900000 What's your expenses with that? About five, uh, 400000 So what's your netting? About 500000 right? So you're bringing in 900000 which is like way less than what you used to. Shame on you, right? And I've got 400000 in overhead expenses. So I net 500000 You'd be like, man, you're a genius. So I couldn't listen to other people because they just saw the top line, which is idiocy. You look at the bottom line when you run a business. What's coming home? What are you netting? And what do you got to do to get to that, right? Everybody likes to say, you got to work smarter and not harder. Bring me another client and bring me some more pancakes. So listen, when you see me talking with attitude, I'm talking to myself. I'm telling you, my life is better than ever. It's better than ever. Before I even started losing weight not tired head home at five what a concept y'all taking on new clients nope that's pretty easy it's hard bringing on new clients i don't care what business it is you got to train them and hear all their complaints about whoever they were working with and try and prove that you're going to be better than them and how you collect it or are you saying that no business should bring on no business you probably talk that way if that's what you think I'm saying. So I'm finding a real interesting concept here, and I'm going to expand on it. And uh, I've already outlined a book on it. And uh, it's going to be basically how uh, more is the killer in the United States. More equals dying faster. More business, more clients. Let's go. But we don't say, bring me another pancake, bring me more, bring me more food. Well, that's gluttony. But with business, we don't see it that way. So what I want to be and where I'm at now is in my practice, buff, lean, mean, like not an ounce of fat. Um, every November, I figure out what clients I need to fire since it started. Didn't have any clients I need to fire last two Novembers. Everybody's done. Don't work overtime. Don't work Saturdays. See, that's amazing in a tax practice. Like, amazing. It's like a unicorn practice. Does not exist. Then I've lost 87 pounds. Get on the scale. Man, 162. Wow. What are you doing? Getting enough sleep. Not eating after eight. Not eating before eight. Drinking enough water, only drinking water. Drinking when I think I'm hungry. Slowing down. Food is not for entertainment. It's not for reward. It's for fuel. So I don't, I don't ever have like, well, it's Friday night. I'm going to town. We go out to eat. What do I eat? Meat and veggies. Well, you, do you know what kind of sauce I put in there? This got some extra... They might have a lot of salt in that. Okay. 
is that better than a pile of chips and three tortillas and uh, uh, whatever the little dessert thing they bring out at the end? Or I mean, well, I just, I, you know, there's too much salt in there. So um, I guess I'll just have all this crap. And, and, and we make it hard. I know I did. We make it hard because we don't really want to do it. Well, I'll count things. And maybe that works. And I know it does for a lot of people. Didn't work for me. And I'm an accountant. Because then it just became about counting stuff. And I'm like, and then what did it become? You know, I could have me one of them Slim Jims. Okay. And that's only like one point. There ain't a Slim Jim in my life. But I was having some Slim Jams. Or, well, um, you know, because I worked out, th then I can have a piece of cake. Because I lost this many calories, I can only eat this many calories. But since I worked out, I lost these calories. I was looking right at the treadmill and said I lost that many calories. So, boom, I can go get me some cake. Maybe that works. It didn't for me. Okay. Well, I'm going to get me a, a gym membership. Boom, done. All right. When did I go? Didn't. Why? Because I was a fat hog. Exercising gluttony in how I was running my business. The same as I was doing the same thing to my body. Had to make changes. Hard changes. Now I'm run deep. Netting more. It's not about top line. It's about the bottom line. Over here, 87 pounds. Doing what? What I just told you. Well, did you measure some things? No. Well, how'd you know you were done eating and didn't eat too much? Simple. Listen to my body. Go out to eat, immediately take half off, uh, 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 move at half. I'm not going to eat that half, I know. Eat a little slower. Right? We don't go out with friends as often because I don't want to be distracted when I'm eating in terms of I want to be able to listen to my body. Now, we can, we can do that a little better because I'm more like it's just easy to know. And I can look at a plate of food and go, I'm going to have a fourth of that. I'm going to be stuffed. So my stomach shrank. And so then my body's already telling me like, oh, man, it hurts. Oh, I ate too much. You know, three months in and not having any kind of carb or bread, still have none. I was at breakfast and for one reason, I was like, I wonder what that biscuit tastes like. So I had a fourth of a biscuit. And I was like, boy, I can change. I can taste the. The baking soda? Like, this tastes horrible. I can't live without biscuits. I used to say the same thing. Now I eat them. Like, this is told, this is crap. This tastes bad. This is like at a place that's called Big Biscuit. <laughs> They're known for their biscuits. Right? My, my body will tell me now. I, I don't know why, but about three weeks ago, I went and had some chicken nuggets that are breaded. And I don't even know why I just like either wasn't thinking or I don't know. And I went into this restaurant that I hadn't been in for a long time. Well, I knew it right away. Oh man. I don't want to do that. See our brain's smarter than we give it credit for. It knows how much sleep we need. It'll wake us up when it's done downloading to the cloud or whatever it's doing when we're sleeping. It don't need to be digesting. And our brain can tell us pretty good, hey, you're full. So eating slower and listening and all the other things. So you could do all those things. Now you may go, I'm just not going to eat like a rabbit. Then don't. But you can make sure you're getting enough sleep. We binge on shows and Netflix, but get enough sleep. You can stop eating at eight. You can wait to eat until after 8 a.m. You can drink water or at least more. You can drink water when you're hungry. You can eat slower. You can stop rewarding yourself um, uh, with food. You can stop distracting yourself while you're eating so that you can listen to see when you're full. And maybe, depending on your makeup and DNA and all that good stuff, Maybe you can have biscuits and maybe you can have a slice of cake and all that good stuff. But you'd be proving my point with practice management. You would have made some change. It can't be I still have a stack of pancakes every Sunday because that leads to and then also, yeah, 
Monday afternoon, I do this and oh yeah, it's Friday. And so I got to do that. And oh yeah, I just won this. So I'm going to treat myself. And it just leads to that. It just, it just run right down. The same as I didn't give myself a choice because I was like, I'm not taking on new clients. We're getting rid of clients. No choice of, well, that kind of client will bring in. No. Gluttony. In both directions. So now I've got all kinds of time on my hands. Uh, April 15 rolled around, done, took a couple weeks off, came back, worked a few days, talked to some clients, went and see, basically took the rest of the month of May off, um, got married the third week in June. I don't think I worked at all in June. Um, we went, uh, basically, we just traveled around. Um, we got married June 24th and we didn't stop traveling until um, mm -hmm. August. Uh, that was the chair, by the way. Um, see, that's the chair. Um, but, I mean, we didn't start, we didn't stop traveling until it was Coop's birthday and went to Vegas for a second time. Boom! Awesome. Came in. We did have some extensions because we were waiting on some Yahoo other CPA firms that somehow can't get their crap together to get returns done until the fall because they're practicing gluttony. Think their clients are well taken care of? So anyways, we're just waiting on other people. My clients already got me everything. We're done. All we got to do is plug in one or two other things that we're waiting on somebody else. Plug them done, plug them done, plug them done. I don't have fall tax season. I don't work overtime. We were leaving early. We were done three days before the deadline and rolled around on both September and October. Uh, pretty well, you know, after, after the October 15th deadline this year, boom, the last three weeks I've been gone traveling, doing some seminars, uh, doing some awesome things with ADP um, and clients are fine, right? We're keeping up with the bookkeeping. I got staff that are doing it, but it's also what my staff can handle is also what I can handle. And having less staff, as in I got two full time, less for me to manage, right? And then they're better, they're happier, so I think there's a real correlation there, and I'm excited for exploring it more. All right. Got to eat. Thanks for tuning in. I'd love it if you'd subscribe. And then don't you ever forget, you've never met a CPA quite like me. You have a great one. Love you.